Hey, what's up YouTube? This is the We All Juggle Knives channel and you are at Multi-Tool Monday. Today I'm going to review the Leatherman Knifeless Rebar. That is that multi-tool right there. Now people tend to judge a multi-tool by its tool set, but the rebar has several benefits independent of its uh, specific tool set. For one, it's very easy to carry. Now this is the Leatherman Wave and this is the rebar. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in thickness there. You know, look how the, the rebar is just a lot less bulky. The Wave has four different liner locks, right, for the longer tools, and then it has the locking mechanism for the smaller tools as well. Whereas the lock on the rebar, you know, one on each handle, just think how much more simple that is. A lot less things can go wrong. So two big reasons I recommend the rebar are the simplicity and the compactness. Now this has pliers with replaceable wire cutters. The two longer tools are a wood saw and a metal file. And the shorter tools are scissors, screwdrivers, an awl and a reamer, a combo can opener bottle opener with a uh, wire cutting notch and a Phillips or cross screwdriver. It also has a fold out lanyard hole. Now all the tools on the rebar open from the inside of the handles and they all lock in place. This is the lock. It's a very simple yet effective lock. To disengage you just press down on that. There's a notch. So that is the whole tool set. They've removed the serrated blade and the plain edge blade and they've given you some small scissors in return. Now the whole idea of this is that, well, it doesn't have any knife blades, so if you live in a place where you're not allowed to have a folding knife on you, this would be convenient, but it's more for people that are carrying a knife separately. You know, if you carry a dedicated folding knife, like let's say this uh, Spyderco TI Military, well obviously, you know, a knife like this, it can just fit in so much more blade than you could fit in one handle of a multi-tool. It's a pretty comprehensive tool set, minus the knives. I mean, you've got the scissors, the reamer, screwdrivers, saw. All right, let me roll in some usage footage that I filmed earlier this week. All right, let's demo this uh, reamer. It's an awl and a reamer, but we're going to demo the, uh, the reamer part, which is a drill. Drilling a divot drilling a divot with the reamer and you can drill a hole all the way through if you really wanted to and I have done that before but uh, we're just gonna drill a divot I oh, was sorry for the wind I can't control the wind noise but that's how a reamer works you see that part is the uh, the part that gouges out right that uh, the little divot so you see that little divot we made in only a few seconds, and if you wanted to continue, you could go all the way through and drill a hole with the, uh, the reamer. And like I said, this is both a reamer and an awl, so you can actually use it as a leather punch, and you can actually sew with this. Now I ain't, I ain't the best sewer, but I will punch it through something. Hold on. Stay in camera. There we go. Alright, so I mean definitely will easily punch through. This is not leather, but it's fairly tough. I have here a ferro rod. See those sparks? I'm actually using the file. Alright, so not usually what you'd use a file for, but I oh, know it's good to know. Good to know. Okay, let's use one of the screwdrivers on the, uh, the handle screws on this Kershaw Camp 12 machete. And there you go. Alright, now I don't actually want to remove the handle, so I will screw it back in. Okay, testing out the saw on this uh, knifeless rebar. So I have this piece of scrap wood and, you know, I'm going to cut it like right here because 
as you can see, this part is really warped. I can't use that for anything regarding wood carving, but this part is relatively straight. So I'm going to cut it right there and uh, use it for some future projects. And there you go. Very quickly cut this little scrap piece of wood in half. All right, some other random stuff. Let's uh, let's demo the uh, little wire cutters. All right, here's another nail, but that one is in way deeper. I don't think I'm going to be able to pull that all the way out because it's just going to pull it out and then it'll bend it sideways. But it will provide a stress test for the pliers. Okay, great for a single piece of paper, like office work type stuff. All right, I folded the paper to be eight layers thick. All right, eight layers, no problem. All right, one layer of cardboard, what will it do? Pretty good, hold on. It cuts the cardboard pretty well. Let's uh, let's try two layers. All right, two layers. It can still cut them. I mean, I kind of have to strong arm it a little bit and kind of force it a bit. All right, the paracord test. Let's do the uh, see how it does on the strands first, right? Nice. Hold on, doing this through the viewfinder. Alright, so it's good on the individual strands. Okay. Not so good there. The hell, dude. Alright, so basically... It does really well, um, but it works best if you cut with the ends of the scissors. Like if you put it all the way down here, it actually doesn't cut that well. So there's a little bit of a trick to it. You know, basically cut with the very ends. Like I said, if you put it too far down there, it actually... Uh, you see the, the scissors tend to separate. All right, well, it does its job, but there's kind of a little trick to it. So there you go. Now, one thing I don't like about this knifeless rebar is that there's extra space that they're not using. First of all, the, uh, the fold-out lanyard hole takes up some space, but next to that, there's... Uh, some more empty space so if you combine those two there's more than enough room for another tool and it could be a longer tool too. Yeah I don't really like that we kind of got shortchanged by one tool they have not maximized the space inside the multi-tool you know anything would have been better than nothing but what are some other what are some tools that they could have put in that available slot? Well, the Super Tool 300 EOD has a hacksaw, they could have put that in, or the metal probe from that as well, which can puncture and probe. Or they could have put a different size of screwdriver, they could have put a chisel. Like I said, anything would have been better than uh, just letting that go to waste. Yeah, if you want a small knife to complement the rebar, 
you know, assuming you don't want to just carry a full size, a large knife, but you want something, I would recommend that Cold Steel Lucky. This is the two bladed model. This is S35 VN Steel. Right, it's got a plain edge and it's got a fully serrated as well. So this little knife will give you a lot better steel and a lot better blades than you would get if you had the uh, the rebar with the knife blades. So check this out, I will include a link. The other item I would recommend is this little Leatherman accessory kit. I will include a link to this. This is an adapter that fits over the uh, Phillips screwdriver. You see this adapter, it's square right there, it fits over the Phillips and then you can accept uh, Leatherman's flat bits and also this can accept normal size bits as well. So with this adapter, I mean, you basically can use Leatherman bit kits just like some of the other Leathermans, they come with a bit exchanger built in, but with this, you know, you can add it to your rebar, so that's really useful. Yeah, that was actually recommended to me by several of my subscribers who have been using them. And this also fits the Super Tool 300 and basically any Leatherman that has a, a screwdriver of that, that size and shape. Alright, let's get a little crazy here. What would happen if they just put scissors on the regular rebar, the one that has the, the knife blades? Well, they would have to make room for it. Where could they make room? If they included that adapter and a bit kit with every rebar, then they could remove the two other screwdrivers and you would have room for the scissors and you could still keep the blades and all the other stuff. You know, I recommend the rebar in general. The rebar continues to be one of Leatherman's strongest models. You know, especially when you factor in price. Now, whether you get the bladeless or the regular model, that really depends on your specific situation. Final thoughts on the knifeless rebar. It's a great idea. More people than ever are carrying folding knives because there's so many very good budget options for folding knives now. And then if, if you want to go more expensive, there's even more very good options. So, you know, this the time has come to offer bladeless models. There are no real significant drawbacks to this. I mean, the scissors are a bit short and there is that extra space that they could have utilized, but those are super minor. There's nothing major wrong with this multi-tool. The current price of $70 that is a little bit high, but it's, it's no higher than the price creep of all the other Leathermans. I will include links if you want to pick up this or another Leatherman or the other items I showed in the video. Please try to use those links. They do help support the channel. I hope you enjoyed another Multi-Tool Monday. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.